So in Timothy Finley's uh, novel, The Wars, we can sort of uh, think about the title of the book as a whole and how it relates to some of the major themes or ideas being presented. And this would be actually a really good essay topic for your final paper. Uh, you could, again, explain the significance of the title. And what's interesting about the title is the fact that it's a plural, right? So it's not the war, it's the wars. So it's implying that there's more than one war going on um, within the narrative. And the first one being the obvious, sort of the World War I, uh, what was called the Great War, and how Robert has to endure sort of the physical obstacles or the physical uh, hardship, suffering of a soldier on the battlefield. Uh, there are sort of other wars taking place as well, and these are more internal. So the external battle is on the battlefields of uh, France and in parts of Europe uh, during the Great War, and then the internal battles are occurring within Robert himself as he sort of struggles to come to terms with the realities of being a soldier and what that entails and uh, as well as his identity so he had he also struggles with who he is and fights uh, trying to have to conform to this sort of military model of masculinity that he doesn't really fit in with uh, so uh, there are some aspects of Robert's character that really stand out and set him apart from uh, the other sort of soldiers uh, the fact that he has such strong empathy and compassion. Um, we have, we see this when he cares for Rowena all throughout his early uh, life before he enlists and it's only after her death that uh, he actually enlists as a soldier. But he seems to be uh, somebody who acts like a guardian or protector of those who cannot take care of themselves or those who need help. Um, and he has a great sort of sense of compassion and empathy for others. So being a soldier seems almost counterintuitive for somebody like Robert who cares so much about people and taking care of people that as a soldier he has to sort of kill people, right? So that's the opposite of where we think uh, he should be sort of uh, reaffirming some of his uh, compassion and his strong feelings that way. He's forced to sort of kill others and uh, again it seems as if it's going against the very nature of his character by doing so and I also think he's battling internally with his own sort of sexual identity as well I think it's sort of implicit in the novel that um, there are so sort of um, Robert is confused about his sexual identity uh, his homosexuality it's never really said outright that uh, he's gay, uh, but there are sort of, um, he has feelings, strong feelings of love for uh, Harris, and uh, when he uncovers the fact that Taffler also is sort of, uh, um, sort of experimenting with his sexuality, uh, this also sort of causes Robert to feel sort of panic, right? and he starts has this sort of brain stammer uh, where he can't quite process what's going on so he also has this sort of confusion of his own identity in regards to his sexuality and then I would also say he has a very strong kin kinship with animals right so this is another idea that Robert is sort of uh, fighting a part of himself uh, that is kind and caring and uh, in the war where animals are exploited and they are victimized and they are sort of the innocent victims, right, um, of this, he tries to protect them, but again, it's almost like a lost cause at this point where the destruction is so great uh, that he also has to sort of struggle with uh, humanity, the nature of humanity in, in its sort of destructive ways. And uh, it seems, again, like it's counterintuitive to who he is to even be a soldier in the first place but he sees a soldier as somebody who is protecting those who need help uh, who need somebody strong to look after them and watch out for them 
so that's sort of what he believes a soldier is at the beginning of the war. And then by the end, uh, soldiers are uh, sort of shown to be destructive and the war itself is sort of a corrupting or uh, destructive force that uh, takes lives and doesn't really have a strong moral purpose behind it. Uh, and then many of the soldiers become disillusioned with the war itself, including Robert, who uh, we will learn um, no longer sort of sees himself as part of this military institution. So as a historical metafiction, uh, we can also sort of think about the actual history and Canada's role uh, that it played in World War I. Uh, so these are just some facts, uh, interesting uh, information that adds to our um, understanding of Robert Ross's experience. So between 1914 and 1918, over uh, 625,000 Canadians were sent to the European Front. Uh, 61,000 uh, plus Canadians lost their lives and 172,000 plus were wounded. So in other words, more than one in three Canadian soldiers were killed or injured during the war. And we'll look at some examples of images. Uh, there's actually a really great photo set on theatlantic.com um, and I'll post a link on the course homepage, but it shows some of the actual sort of um, scenes straight off the battlefield, uh, photographs from there. And it's, you know, it's a graphic uh, site to see all these, the actual uh, conditions that these men were under. So the conditions of World War I were different than other wars. This was a trench war, which uh, sort of corresponds to this uh, system of trenches that were built on either side of the battleground, uh, where opposing armies had these uh, sort of underground kind of tunnels uh, dug into the earth, and this would be used to sort of um, as communication areas and to, to set up your uh, weaponry, your arsenal, and um, you would live uh, further back from what they called no man's land, uh, but all these sort of trenches were connected, interconnected, and um, you were almost sort of buried under the earth. Uh, so if a bomb went off, you know, you could be buried alive or buried and wounded. And as this passage here describes, um, it was not a, an effective system for war, right? It, it resulted in uh, more sol soldiers killed or wounded. And uh, the spread of disease and uh, how sort of the, the earth itself became toxic. And there's lots of descriptions in the novel about how the earth itself just sort of seeps uh, the poisons of the weaponry and uh, became sort of foul with death and rotting bodies, of course. Um, so there was a lot of sort of suffering going on within these trenches and, you know, it's a horror beyond our imaginations almost uh, to even think about uh, what these men had to endure. And if you look closely at this Seeing there are sort of bodies just uh, lying within the trenches and then an alive soldier, obviously, but, you know, men lying, uh, uh, just their bodies weren't removed, right? So they would just uh, lie, lay there and so there would be dead bodies and then uh, soldiers trying to do their jobs and it became, became a sort of very uh, uh, toxic environment. So here's another view of the trench systems. So here between the two battle lines we have uh, no man's land. Oh no, here is no man's land right here and then this is the front trench line, the communication trench line and then the sort of support trench line and then behind there would be uh, the soldiers quarters. Um, so they're sort of areas dug underground uh, used where you would sleep and then you would go uh, towards the front lines uh, when you are 
trying to sort of advance on your enemy and claim more territory. So these underground trenches were built and no man's land was sort of protected with this thin sort of barbed wire and if you crossed no man's land and were shot you know you would your body would lay there for days and days and days weeks and weeks uh, even if you were wounded because it was too much of a risk to uh, go out into no man's land because you were a sort of open target when you were in the trenches you were a little bit more protected but it was very difficult to advance and uh, the war took longer than they expected, right? So four years of trench warfare uh, definitely took its toll. And again, the casualties were much greater than World War II in regards to uh, soldiers' lives and the wounded and um, dead. So here's the alternate view. So this would be no man's land again. So often the lines between the enemy and the sort of uh, home army was very little distance, right? So uh, 25 yards. Uh, so you can see there was like, you could almost see your enemy on the other side and he was just like a man just like you, a young man. You know, most of these young men were, you know, barely 19. Uh, so it's tragic on many levels in regards to both sides. Um, innocent lives were, you know, taken. And then you can see the line, so artillery is way back at the back, and then you have communication trenches which connect uh, these other trenches, so uh, the men would sort of move uh, forward and try to advance the lines of their army. So here's a closer image of uh, the front lines there. So this barbed wire here could be uh, the the wire separating uh, no man's land from the trenches. So again, you're very much open to uh, any sort of incoming attack, right? It's very dangerous, and uh, the trenches were, you know, minimally protecting you, but uh, this was the system that they were using. In the book as well, there's lots of descriptions of these sort of pool, cesspools of water that form uh, from sort of the rainy climate and then the mud, everywhere is mud, and it would almost sort of suck you down and there's this passage in the novel where Robert gets, he almost drowns in mud because he gets sucked it down, it's almost like quicksand. And this is sort of how many soldiers uh, died of drowning uh, from these sort of pools where you get stuck in them and it's just sort of pulls you down and uh, eventually you would drown. And the land itself is sort of an interesting part of uh, Finley's novel. He evokes sort of the elements of nature or the earth. Uh, so earth like dirt, fire, water, air, all of these are uh, sort of part of Robert Ross's experience and Finley is a very sort of sensory writer, almost poetic, and he gives us all these sort of imagery of uh, the natural world and it's very sort of, I would say almost poetic and in his descriptions of nature and very vivid anyway. Um, but earth, air, fire, and water, these are sort of other elements that make up uh, Robert Ross's life, his experience of the war. The weaponry was also sort of uh, cutting edge at the time. Uh, this was the first war where poison gas, gas warfare was used, and the Germans used chlorine gas uh, or mustard gas. And uh, there is a scene where Robert has to, um, the men aren't issued gas masks, so this is one of the sort of tragedies, or uh, it's one of the central sort of injustices of the novel where the military does not supply the men with what they need uh, in order to um, exist or live through to survive. Uh, so basic things like a gun, 
a gas mask aren't supplied to these